Good evening. My name is Odie Hawkins, and it's Monday evening, uh, September the 2nd, Labor Day. And once again, I'm here along with uh, my partner, my wife, Zola Selena Hawkins. If you belong, join me over here. Why don't you? I may as well make speeches beside you as well as <laughs> away from you. This is true. Uh, uh, we're here once again on a, a Monday afternoon to make an effort to sell a prospective reader one or some of the books that I've written over a period of time. I have 38 of them. And the idea came up uh, from a friend who said, look, I'm watching everything on TV. I see YouTube. I see people doing TED and da 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 why don't you just pile some books up beside you, people? Mm -hmm. and you and have books. <laughs> you, I mean, show. No apples, no cherries, uh -huh. no oranges. Mm -hmm. Books. Yeah. He said, why don't you sell them? Why don't you put them up? Look, Zola is, Zola is media savvy. Mm -hmm. That means, well, you know, <laughs> talking to me. I see, I see. <laughs> uh, so, okay, why don't you do that? So, we started uh, this reading we call it last year we started off reading uh columns from a newspaper called the african times newspaper just to get to feeling for what the audience might you know mm -hmm. feel about it and the reception we got was pretty good and that was called moments in time moments in time i forgot the current name of this new moments new moments in time <laughs> new, new moments with new moments new moments in time new moments <laughs> Okay, uh, I have three books that I would like to push at you, <laughs> but simply because they're three thick books doesn't mean that I'm going to take all day to talk about it, and, yeah. and I am not, mm -hmm. because... Uh, but it's an old-fashioned subject. It's an old-fashioned subject. Yeah. How is it? Here's the thing, uh, what she's mentioning. The books, the three books, the first one is called Sweet Peter Dita. Mm -hmm. Sweet Peter Dita. Very good. Close, so you can see. Sweet Peter Dita. Oh. The second one is called. Oh, and, and the uh, this one is called by the cover art design by Sir Charles. Oh, Sir Charles. Yeah, Sir Charles. The second one is called Mr. Sweets. Mr. Yeah. Sweets. Mr. Sweets. And this is Mr. Sweets. And the third cover. book, I don't have a copy of, but the third book is called, I'm sorry, I do have the third book. Yes, okay. okay, right, there you go. And I think the cover, though, was done by... Um, Mima. I'm sorry, D.J. Robinson. D.J. Robinson, okay, all right. The third book is called Blue Sweets. Little, Little Sweets. Sweets. There you go. Little Sweets. Okay. And its cover was done by Tony Gleason. Tony Gleason. Tony Gleason. Author and artist. Yeah. Uh, we get together with our friends. Mm -hmm. Now, let me explain a little bit about what this is about. Mm -hmm. uh, you may know some of it, but maybe not all of it. Mm, kind of. Okay. <laughs> if I begin to bore you, just tap me not on Not at all. Head. I'm not bored at all. Okay. It's entertaining. <laughs> okay. Here's what happened. I started writing books, newspaper, articles, all kind of stuff when I was like about 15. Living in Chicago in a, a rundown place called the Alma Hotel. It was located at 3800 South Lake Park. Not in Hyde Park, but quite a distance away. Uh, the place was filled with characters. I mean, the first and second floor were uh, reserved for prostitution. The third floor was where most, we call ourselves civilians, right. where the civilians lived, and the fourth floor was reserved mainly for off-duty uh, homes and reclining tents. Oh, okay. They lived on the fourth floor. Understood. Okay. Uh, you had a pecking order. They had a pecking order. Oh, <laughs> they were at the top of the pecking order. Uh, I lived in this building for four years. I went through high school from... Uh, the Lake Park, uh, 3800 Lake Park. During the 
course of the four years I spent in this building, I became good friends with mm -hmm. a number of people. One of them was uh, a pimp named Big Al. Mm -hmm. And uh, he suggested to me that since I was a writer, what I should do is make some effort to start writing about the profession he was in. I think he strongly suggested. He did. He did. Matter of fact, he called, he called me, he bribed me. You know, <laughs> he would send me for cigarettes and give me a five dollar bill for a tip or something. Anyway, right. mm -hmm. but uh, I, I didn't think anything was uh, wrong about uh, writing about him. But what I wanted to do was take it beyond the simple street lit level. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I went around and around, to be honest, for years, mm -hmm. for years. The first Sweet Peter Dita was published in 1979. Mm -hmm. I think the idea was suggested to my head in about 1970. Mm -hmm. So things don't automatically spring up and, and, and take shape just because you think of them. Well, in mentioning that, the 1979 book, if any of you have a copy, they sold for as much as four hundred five hundred dollars for book collectors. They're collector items. Yes, they are collector items, and so uh, and in, initially, when this book came out, it sold over twenty thousand copies through Holiday House. Little paperback with bad art. The, the current covers are much more improvements over what the what the publishing company initially stuck on them. Oh, okay, and this. The cover was uh, you know, the background. Just, it's just to say, Charles. Yes, well, but um, where was this? The bar. Oh, this was in uh, Chicago at the uh, at the uh, bar on the 79th Street. The President's Lounge. The President's, the President's Lounge. Lounge, okay. And uh, for those who are familiar, I understand that they remodeled the President's Lounge. So oh, it's, it's this always is, been uh, snappy. But, but this is the yeah. former. Okay, having said all that, I would like to say a little bit about why I wrote the books and what uh, I would like to explain to people who say, uh, well, this, this is about uh, street people, illiterate people, uh, about some criminal element there mm -hmm. and so forth and so on. Uh, during the course of the time I spent listening to Big Al and uh, Cash Black and uh, Blue and all the rest of the people who were doing what they did. Sweet Peter Dita. Sweet Peter Dita himself. Mm -hmm. They impressed me uh, by simply by the fact they were able to use their lives as a, a frame, mm -hmm. but that did not necessarily mean that they were exactly who they were called. Mm -hmm. For example, for example, uh, one of the people who's not mentioned here, I think he is mentioned in passing in the book. Uh, I was on the fringe of, uh, of uh, crowds that were listening to Iceberg Slim, who was a notorious pimp at that time. Mm -hmm. Listen to him talk about uh, prostitution and pimping as though it were a stock market commodity. Okay. He talked about uh, uh, investment shares and, and mm -hmm. so forth mm -hmm. in terms that blew my mind. You know, a lot of people just simply thought, what is he talking about? We're talking about you know, the guy with the fly clothes when, and the riding, riding the beautiful car with the ladies with the, where'd you get that from? My book. My book. My book. <laughs> but these gentlemen, yes, the uh, gentlemen that you're speaking of, I maintain they could have sold fire to the devil. Uh, they yeah. had the gift. Yeah. Yeah. But then this is one of the things that made them Mm -hmm. I think unique. For example, mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, Sweet Peter Dita, the one who first started talking about having a book about people who were involved in a certain kind of uh, salacious and, and uh, nefarious activities mm -hmm. should be considered worms or uh, uh, dogs on earth. Well, on the high end, it's never. Considered with the Carl girls, and that you know, well, that's for there, the yeah. white collar, yeah. yes. Uh, no, but, yeah. their, their legs were 
street walkers say you got a lot of exercise. <laughs> Matter of fact, it's a joke. Who is it? Uh, Eddie Murphy. I know. Yeah, I think it was Eddie Murphy or something. He was trying to encourage girls to come to his stable mm -hmm. because they would receive the benefits of beautiful, glowing night air, fresh air, fresh air, and uh -huh. opportunity to lay back frequently and rest yourself. Yes. So <laughs> All night long. All night long. As long as you bring that money in. Okay. Anyway. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, the first thing, like I said, I had to do was to create a different frame. Mm -hmm. I wanted to use the characters involved, Sweet Peter Dita and Lulu the Ho and all the rest of those people. But it's not strictly speaking simply about things that are happening in the Alamo Hotel or on the surrounding streets. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a real study. I, I think I've done it. Mm -hmm. It's a real study. In, in, and, and, and geopolitical, uh, mm -hmm. geopolitical politics, for example. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays people are more aware that what happens in Gaza, mm -hmm. what happens in San Francisco, what happens in Wuhan, China, mm -hmm. affects us and we affect it and so forth and so on. Plus, this book was used by Professor Justin Gifford. He did. And his, uh, I'm not sure if it's totally in his class, uh, but also uh, specifically sent him copies for his writing class in yes, prison. Yes, he did. Uh, I forgot what prison it was, but. Yeah, several, prison, several other people have used it. I think uh, uh, Ms. Price, Professor Price, may have used it uh, from mm -hmm. time to time. Mm -hmm. I do know from having taught, uh, created writing class that San Quentin. Mm -hmm for two years in that uh, Chino prison down here, down south. Mm -hmm. I do know that there are a number of uh, people in jail who had Sweet Peter Vita. And, and I saw them all the Yes, there, I guess, yeah. indeed, yes. And, okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, the rumor, the rumor, if we go back far enough, is that Sweet Peter Vita's great-great-grandfather mm -hmm. was whipped off the boat and assigned to some plantation in Mississippi or something, mm -hmm. it was a few short months, he was pimping the slave owner's wife. Now, I don't know, this is just always something that's been passed down. Mm -hmm. uh, he learned how to read, according to the legend, by mm -hmm. grabbing old pieces of paper, flying through the streets, mm -hmm. and taking it, and uh, deciphering it word by word till he found out how to do it, and some little eight-year-old kid helped him a little bit the way kids. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not the way to write it. Here's the way you write A like that, mm -hmm. and B it like this. So mm -hmm. anyway, the, the dynasty begins to happen when uh, Duke Manchin mm -hmm. uh, has Sweet Peter Dita for his son. Mm -hmm. Sweet Peter Dita has a son that is named, of course, Mr. Sweets. Mr. Sweets. Yes. And they are take us through this this pimping dynasty to indicate that all is not well on the streets of America or any place any place in this world mm -hmm. where people are struggling and starving or doing whatever they need to to survive. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about I, I'm stressing this because I've been cornered a couple of times. With people saying, "Oh, this is that gangster stuff." It's about uh, people are shooting and killing each other. There's not one shooting, one killing in this. It's not sadistic. Uh, it's not like Fifty Shades of Grey. No, oh, no, okay. no. Oh. But it's a lot of tongue in cheek, salacious. So. I'm, 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 I'm signifying a little bit, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> like <coughs> some, some, some white person, I can't remember who it was. We were having an argument one day. And he said to me, okay, I'm tired of that. Let's change the subject. Mm -hmm. And, I, I, you know, I, it stopped me for a minute. Of mm -hmm. course, it didn't stop me from doing anything. But I, I mm -hmm. said, you know what? Mm -hmm. You give to the AA, NAACP, or you do the marches and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. what, what is it in your psyche that would make you think you could sit here with us having a man-to-man -man discussion, a man-to-man -man mm -hmm. discussion, and you can turn to me and say, okay, let's change the subject. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think? What it goes on in your psyche? Yeah. It turned him red because he realized, mm -hmm. oh, you think I'm feeding 
Yeah. What about telling you and say, okay, shut up? Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to hear that. Yeah. Well, you could. I mean, no, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Just because it shows a different breed. I say, man, I got to run. Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> Mr. Sweets takes over some ladies that had been left when Sweet Pea the Dita winds up being wow. sentenced in jail. Yeah. It's a, it's a long, sort of crazy story, but sometimes legacies come to us from unexpected places. Mr. Sweets is not totally satisfied with his lifestyle. He wants to go off into something else. Mm -hmm. But since he's been in this profession for so long, he doesn't know what else to do. You make a great stockbroker, or hedge fund manager yeah. or something like that. Yeah. But that's not, that's not the place that they find themselves going. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me finish that with this, this letter. Okay, also, like, on Sweet Peter D, I'd like to point out that the printing is quite comfortable. Most people would be able to read it probably without I want 14 glasses. font for the older people, right. for my okay. people like me, who need mm -hmm. glasses. And I'd like... Uh, oh, that's a little bit too much for me to read. <laughs> uh, I was trying to find a halfway uh, decent paragraph that I could read <laughs> online. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. Oh, okay. This is this is this is good. Okay. The whole scene was something like a dream. Right after I changed clothes and got out on the street. It didn't take me but one evening of walking to realize I was lost without a car. I must have walked ten blocks at least to get to one joint to the next. And they weren't really joints. They were something like beer parlors with miniature pool tables and a lot of strangers. The next day came up bright and shiny as the day before and just as dull. It was hard to believe that anything was happening in town, no matter what the elevator man and the service people running in and out of the hotel told me. I had spotted several broads. I took them to be holes, but I couldn't really be certain. Most of the broads I had checked out on the streets looked like bastard holes anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever bastard holes are. Okay, so that's just a, a gentleman. Uh, it it gets it gets a little bit uh, bawdy uh -huh. because that's the lifestyle that we that we're talking about, and you couldn't you wouldn't be true to it if you came up with something that was just simply too academic. So the language does not get oh. profane. So read the paragraph in the back. I believe this is by Justin himself. Right, Justin. This is a the, the person we meant. We talked about earlier, yeah. mm -hmm. Peter didn't know how to pimp by the time he was 12, taught by his whole mother. We taught him a few other things along the way, things that his friends wouldn't know about until they were much older, if ever. Then he was given over to the care of his father, Big Duke. Now, Big Duke was not just your, your average run of the mill pimp. No one, no way. Big Duke was the cock of the walk with the table of the best bitches in the city. It was with Big Duke that Peter, the 12-year-old prince, began his real education. He was a good student, sharp and fast. By the time he was 16, Peter was running the, his high school's drug traffic and had almost a string of teenage holes. At 18, Peter was a full-fledged pimp and began the long downward spiral of the drug addict. Sweet Peter Dita is, as one critic called it, an altogether getting down Masterpiece. That's Jonas Hill. He okay, knows that's something about getting down. Doctor, uh, professor. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't, write, he didn't write the, he didn't write the, the, the blurb for that one. Okay. No, I just okay. did it because she asked me to. Oh, okay. <laughs> anyway, it's a it's a fun story okay. for those who are, can appreciate the street life. This this completes this completes the dynasty. Oh, but you can't this. stop the sweet Peter Dieter, Mister Sweet, when he does something unusual with his his hose. I'm coming. That's oh. what this is. Oh, okay. Okay. You, you've been away from the from the. Here's what she's talking about. The dynasty continues with mm -hmm. little sweets. Uh -huh. Was the son of? Yes. Okay. What happens here is that this young man is just so un. Uh, uh, unattractive to this particular lifestyle, it, it almost passes him by. 
but you cannot escape this, even though there's this, there's a the, this net there waiting for him to get into it. Don't worry, sweetheart. We'll talk about it when we okay. finish. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> uh, what goes on here is that to make a long story short, I've taken us out of the street girl overdressed uh, pimp mm -hmm. into something that is going to be more acquainted with AI mm -hmm. and uh, certain other kinds of specific kinds of mysteries and, and algorithms. Mm -hmm. So the book is not about somebody in the streets. For those who may be aware, the, uh, the cover photo that was done by Tony Gleason is a representation of an ancestral figure called Egungun. Egungun's in Yoruba, in the Yoruba uh, mystic system, mm -hmm. the religious system, are known to be ancestral spirits. Mm -hmm. And on the cover here, the, the kind of little fun joke I'm making that he helped me with is to have a Gungun controls the destinies of some very attractive ladies who are international. You got a uh, Swede, you got a Latina, you got a Nigerian, and a Japanese. So mm -hmm. uh, coming toward the end of the book, we find that little sweets mm -hmm. have become one of the few entrepreneurs in the world to develop a legitimate body service agency that does not rely on live people but takes its income from people who've been designed from people who've been designed to serve a certain purpose now there's no guarantee that these people may, may not rebel in the years to come but right now spring summer autumn and fall are quite content to be doing what they're doing whenever they find themselves a little bit rusty, they, they can get some screws tightened. They're robotic. They're ro ah, mm -hmm. they're that's robotic. what they are. They're they robotic, are, they are robotic, but they're doing more and more of things that they're not programmed to do. So, these are your three the Peter order, books. The order is first, Sweet Peter Dieter, then Mr. Sweet, and then Little, Little Sweet. Sweet. Yeah. So that's the order that they, I suggest you read them in. And um, each one has a unique flavor ah. <laughs> for a street life. Well, um, and delight, as they call it, right? Delight. Yeah, yeah, delight. Delight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, we, you know, we're being told all the time write what you know about, mm -hmm. tell the truth, tell the truth. And in this instance, uh, it took a little while for me to figure out how I could really write the truth without hurting a lot of people's feelings. Well, I like this one because it starts off with Katrina. Yeah. yeah. In New Orleans. And uh, it has a little bit about the religion in it. And a lot of things. In it, and it has a lot of things in it. It's uh, how many? 500. This is. Hey, you got to stay out of here. Okay. Oh, okay. It's 523 pages. So it's the biggest one of the set. But it might take you a couple of days. A little longer as no, you no, savor no. it. And always be sure to get some libations when you uh, come down and join us for. I'm drinking a uh, pomegranate juice. A new name. Agua. Oh. <laughs> All right. See you. I'll post this soon. And see you. We'll see you again. next Monday, same next time. time. Same time. Like that dress. Why, thank you, Uncle Hawkins.